Family owned and operated, Lynn Ladder has been dedicated to providing high quality products and services to the New England area since 1946. With six locations, from their manufacturing plant in New Hampshire to their rental yard in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Lynn Ladder is the one-stop shop for all your new equipment and rental needs. Lynn Ladder has catered to contractors and homeowners for the past 72 years. Have a project, big or small? Then call the Ladder King today at 1-800-225-2510. Always eat cereal. I mean, grown-ups are allowed to eat cereal, right? I always get my phone checking my messages too while I'm eating. Kind of pisses off everybody in my family. What are you gonna do? You gotta stay on top of things. Monday! I get to the gym early now. It's light out early. It's beautiful. And you know what? I wear a tank top at the gym. Why? Because I want to see how I look. It drives me to make myself work out and look better. I feel like like a fat blob. Of how about you? How you feel? I got like a Michelin tire around my waist. Got a little secret. Mr. Monday likes to get these Hershey chocolate eclairs once in a while. You know, once every couple weeks I sneak a couple, you know, I gotta keep my girlish figure. But Hershey, you know what? You should sponsor me. Let's go. Monday! <laughs> beautiful surf sign, Gin Blossoms! Gin Blossoms, those are the people that in their face! You know what I'm saying? They got those lines and Gin Blossom face! Sorry! Sorry! I apologize! Meet me, eat me! Meet me! Monday! Mr. Mister? Huh? Wow. Trying to be like Mr. Monday back in the 80s, huh? Started back then. Mr. Mister. Holy Monday! What's weird is I wouldn't eat one of these in front of anybody. It's like biting into a brick. Monday! I don't really shave all the time. And when I don't, I look older. Did you get the gray hairs coming out? I shave, I look 10 years younger. I don't shave, I look my age. Okay, I look pretty good for my age, all right? I drink olive oil and motor oil combined. And sometimes I wash my hair with antifreeze. <laughs> boobs. I'll smoke a cigarette once in a while too when I'm drunk. Sometimes I eat bottle caps. Hit them out sideways. Causes a little bit of a problem and some blood. Nothing new. Thank you. I love Monday. Welcome to the Monday Night Live show. I'm Carlo, Mr. Monday. We got a great show in store tonight. We got Donald Barrett from the Cannabis Radio Network with us. He's going to enlighten us with some of his ideas. <laughs> and my favorite co host. And buddy, old pal, cat. What's up? What's going yeah. on? Yeah. What's How up? are you? Good to see you. I miss you. I haven't seen you. I know. I've just been so busy just spreading the, the message of Mondays to everybody. Really? <laughs> spreading my seed of Monday. Every day? <laughs> Every day. Tell me what's going on. So you've been following like the Smash Madness stuff or you're not into that? Uh, I mean, I'm excited. The tournament's starting on Monday, the real uh, Thursday. And uh, I mean, it's just an absolute joke. Just <laughs> roll the dice, pick that team. It doesn't matter. I like when the 16 seed beats like the one seed. That's what I'm going upsets. for. I want everybody's bracket to be ruined. What about this man child, Zion? Uh, he is incredible. I bet he's like, what was that kid from the Little League World Series? El Duque, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> he's like the yeah. I'm 14. Yeah, like that guy's not a fully grown adult man. Would you sleep with him? No. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> for, for like a variety of reasons <laughs> Jimmy would break you in half dude <laughs> look at that guy holy crap <laughs> what about you think he's the next great one though like after LeBron and uh, what do no. you think you, you know no I think he's the next I, th I think he'll be really good but I don't think he's going to be as great as Jordan LeBron those guys no, no. alright Klesky how you doing Doing all right. How, what happened with your shows? I mean, you talked about your shows. Yeah, we had a good time at the Cabot and then at Walnut Street, man. We got a couple more coming up in April. Are you banned from any of those places now? Or? No, they love me there. It's the places next door where I, you know, expose myself to minors. That's you know. <laughs> <laughs> they've, been, they've been really on top of you about that, huh? Yeah, no, not children. I'm the guys that work in the diamond factory. Right, that's what I'm saying. I, it's a misunderstanding. <laughs> they come out of the mine. You like yeah, six, you like seventeen year old girls. Um, <laughs> What do, what do we got? Who's Miss Monday? Miss Monday this week is Christina. Her Instagram is Holly Fit Women. 
Uh, that's with one L. She stays busy empowering women and growing her brand. Chrissy also models outfits on her growing YouTube channel. We still have yet to find an entrepreneur that doesn't love Mondays. We do love her. And as always, this Monday is brought to you by John's Roast Beef. Call 781-595-6105 for the best roast beef, chicken wings. The delivery guy must have yeah. got lost tonight because nothing. What happened, John's Roast Beef, tonight? Mm. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? Uh, Tasso, I mean, seriously. He's cutting up the sheep right now or something. We're drawing yeah. straws to see who, which one of us we're going to eat first, right? I mean, yeah. look at Tasso. He's got his cute face. He's got roast beef, pastrami. Where's this guy? Where's yeah. the food? I hope he just I'm shows hungry. up naked covered in James River sauce <laughs> and we can just... <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go right into shoot the shit. <laughs> Tasso, you screwed us. <laughs> Auntie Becky from Full House heading to the big house. Have mercy. Operation Varsity Blues is cracking down on parents who are spending money to influence their children's ability to get into Ivy League and special colleges. So basically, if you had $500,000 and a half-dumb kid, you could get him into Yale as long as you knew like an athletic director or something. They were bribing officials and sports people uh, to get their unqualified children put ahead of others to get into school. How screwed up is that? Oh, shocking. Shocking that rich people spend money to get their kids nicer things. I mean, they always think they're above the law. It's true. Oh, here comes a guy. Seriously, come on in, come on in. Tasso must have heard. To bring it right to hey, bring it up, bring come up right here. Mr. Can you come up here real quick and just show? Just you know, we want to show. Once again, today's, 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 today's come on over. Watch out for the cord. Don't trip. To you by John's roast beef. So Thank you very much. Come on in. Five six one zero five. You too could get a delicious tray of roast beef. Come on in. How you doing? Tell everybody your name. Tell everyone your name. Jose. Jose. How you doing? Jose. What's your What's your brother's name? Angel. Oh, nice. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Unbelievable. You're an angel. Take that, buddy. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, See you later, host base beef and seafood. 71 595 6105. Meet. Meet our buddy. How come you were late? Uh, what? I love Monday. <laughs> <laughs> he loves Monday. Jose does love Monday. <laughs> He's gonna be. So these, these like, <laughs> these like movie stars. It's like a prestige thing. She wanted her kid to be smart when the kid was stupid, and she. Yeah, yeah is that really what it is? A prestige thing? Because like, I think that's what bothers people is they don't like that people can do it, but they also don't really understand why you would drop a million to get a college education. Right. Didn't the daughter have like some YouTube thing where she was making millions? Yeah, she had a makeup tutorial uh, where she basically just advertised that she had no intention of actually showing up for this education that she bought. <laughs> Listen, I want to find out what prison she's going to, and then I'll, I'll pay somebody off to get my kid in college to be with her. Yeah. That's on Becky, dude. Look at her. Which one? You like the daughter or the mother? The, the dude. She's going from Aunt full Becky. house to the big house. You're into older people. And huh? I would love to her. see, uh, you know, a, a, a drama where Aunt Becky is in like a prison shower. Well, Come on. Yeah. Right. Well, so th the whole thing is, you, I mean, you're reading the story, and, and uh, you know, everybody paid like ten thousand dollars a year, forty thousand dollars a year. She paid like five hundred thousand dollars to get her two dumb fucks into a school. Like <laughs> her kids were extra stupid compared to the other rich people's kids. Let me ask you though, th this is another question here. Like, the, a lot of these people aren't failing out of these universities. Is it just pointing out that these are just big dumb buildings full of idiots and nothing matters here? That like you're not really getting an education. That we should just send kids to a, an empty building for two years to screw whoever they want, come out and get a paper out like everybody else. Everybody right? needs to learn a trade, okay? Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree with that. Fucking a. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the next one. New York mob boss gunned down in his driveway. First hit on a boss since Paul Castellano in 1985. And I remember this. Frank Cali, 53, was killed in front of his Staten Island home at 9:15 on Wednesday. Police sources told DailyMail.com Cali was shot six times in the torso. He was then reportedly run over by a blue pickup truck that fled the scene. <laughs> no arrests have been made, but an investigation is ongoing. Uh, he was known as the good wise guy because he gave a lot to charities and whatnot, and this is the first assassination since 1985, Castellano. So John Gotti, back in 1985, had Paul Castellano killed so he could take control. That's mm -hmm. when John, John Gotti started taking over. So I feel that this is because Gotti's son just got out of the can, didn't he? Did you guys say that? Is like, this just symbolic? I just think Gaudi's son had, was behind this whole thing because I think he wants to take, take control. That's my conspiracy theory. But like at this point, are there things <clears throat> that he would then inherit or is it more of just a like pissing on the other guy thing? Yeah, he would just take over everything and then he's the, everything gets paid up tribute to him. I mean, did you from see... From what I understand, that's what I hear. Did you see pictures from the crime scene though? 
Yes. Outline the body in Parmesan cheese. Really? Yeah, yeah that's right. it's nice. And what even constitutes a mob hip anymore? Is it just a guy with a an Italian horn and he smells like garlic and now it's, you know, <laughs> we're going to make it. Scott says he's going to do a movie about it in 10 years. No, you know what it is? Is the FBI is not paying too much attention to the mob anymore because of the Taliban, terrorists, so they're getting away with a little more. They're, they're still around. All right. I mean, we got one here tonight. Uh oh. Yeah. Angelo Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> but one good thing about the mob, they used to keep the streets clean. Did yeah. they? Yeah. Kept the streets clean uh, back in the day. I feel like everybody that Whitey dealt with could have Well, he's disagreed. not. Listen, Whitey's not, wasn't even mafia. You're going to be Italian to be mafia. A rat. He was a no good rat. He's dead. All right. Romanian beggar with no money for diapers is found with expensive jewelry and accessories. Illegal rings seem to be in vogue these days, from human trafficking to school admissions. Everybody's doing it. This new one is a panhandling ring. Police in New Jersey warned that the public, uh, this, these scammers are out there. They're dressing like gypsies, and they have iPhone 10s and all this other shit. And they're just begging people for money. Now, I don't even know if this should be illegal, right? That poor lady's hunchback. No, she gets into a nice guy. What's the criteria right? for being able to beg for change? Like, are we allowing these people or not? I'm going to tell you the best thing to do when, you pull, when you're at a red light. When someone, you pull up a red light and someone comes over to the car and they ask them, say, ask them if they have change for 100. They'll get the hell away from you real quick. Uh, that's what I do. I, I was approached by I was approached by two women. They were like, "Mister, can you, Mister, can you help me get a cab?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, they're the big yellow cars over there." <laughs> I mean, I mean, some of these people are dressed. <laughs> some of these people are wearing Jordans. Like this, this lady was wearing Jordans. These people have nicer clothes than I do. She had a five hundred dollar purse, an iPhone X, and um, a half of a Dunkin' Donuts cup filled with uh, you know enough money to make it me going to McDonald's every day seem like a dumb idea. But did she have an I Love Monday shirt on? One of the nicest, she was most expensive Fubu. pieces of... What? F yeah. Fubu. Fubu, is that what it's called? Fubu is what it's Fubu called, Fubu is yeah. what it is called. Right. That's yeah. what it is. That's what I like. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Honestly, the Echo fits me better, but I like the Fubu <laughs> designs and the artwork more. You look so. good in Echo that. like stuff. Thank you. Yeah. You too. Yeah. For us, by us. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we I mean, good for her. Getting free money. How much money? How much money do you think they make? Enough to get a an day. iPhone 10. How much they do a day or, or or once a month when? A day. Like the panhandlers? Yeah, these people begging. Um, I'm gu I guarantee you they make over a hundred dollars a day minimum. Over a hundred dollars a day minimum, and that's seven days a week. That's seven hundred dollars for you know sitting with the pigeons. Hey. Enough to get high. <laughs> All right. Guy tells cops his name is Soba as they arrest him for drinking and driving. Daniel Sober, 44, from Butler, Pennsylvania, was arrested in Middlesex Township. Police pulled over the driver and said they could smell alcohol in his breath. The legal limit of blood alcohol concentration in Pennsylvania is 0.8%, and that is exactly what was in his system. Uh, and when the you know the police officer said, what's your name? He said, Sober. And that just <laughs> tricks the... Because 0.8, uh, that's nothing. That's like one beer, maybe? No. Yeah, 0.8, you're not even... That, that, what, do you smell a bottle cap? Is there even 0.8 in a beer? <laughs> you know? It depends on what you're drinking, I guess. Look at Soba, huh? Yeah. But him. this guy looks creepy anyway. I mean, granted, it's his mug shot, but yeah. like, maybe the cops saw Wasn't that Billy Crystal's guy. name in Analyze This? What was his name, Daniel? So, wasn't his name Soba? Daniel Sober? Probably. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think it's definitely the cops thought he was being a wise ass. Yeah. I mean, I guess his last name being sober is better than his but, last but name being like, fuck you, pig. Right? He pulled him over for some reason. This was just manifest destiny. This man was destined to be in a prison cell that night. Yeah. yeah. A lightning bolt struck his bedroom, I'm sure. This so, all worked out for the better. He probably has a long rap. I'd like to see what this guy rap sheet if he has a record. You know, they probably know who he was. Yeah. This guy just looks like he really like a rapist. I'm sorry. There's not, I was trying to figure out like another thing, but he looks like he would back you into a corner in a prison cell and quote three biblical things before putting his penis in your mouth. He and would like, you and would you say no? To the Bible verses, yes. He looks like <laughs> one of our a former guests. All right, um, man versus machine. Robots are so good in the workplace, humans becoming less motivated. Researchers found that humans could see that robots were doing better in this uh, experiment. Basically what they did is they gave them like paragraphs of, you know, dialogue and they said count the amount of times that the letter G appears. And then they assigned robots to do the same task. And because people saw that they were so inferior at doing this, they really lost interest in it. And then to then to top it off and involve shame and just take away any type of reward from even accomplishing the feat as a human, they would have an award system where both the robots were awarded something and the participants. But it wasn't based on what you did. It was based on a lottery, just basically crushing your soul. And I think 
all of them killed themselves immediately. No, I don't know. But it really destroyed people's, you know. What's worse, a, a robot or a lazy worker? Lazy, a lazy worker? worker. Okay. Listen, I don't need a robot to help me find the G-spot girls. <laughs> hey. Some of those girls are using a robot. <laughs> it's a handheld one. I don't have to talk to them then, so it's fine. But this this actually leads to like a bigger issue. It's like we you go to a supermarket now and like the tellers are essentially replaceable, right? And then the in we have self-driving cars, so essentially trucks and freight are going to be driving themselves. That accounts for almost 14% of the um, you know just the job market, just what's out there for jobs. So when you take away all of these things, people you know we could still function as a society, but we need a different way of delineating money or credit. Mm -hmm. I mean, could a robot take over your job? I would love for them to have my job. But could they do it? I don't think a robot could uh, change the lives of the children like, the way I do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think a robot could masturbate in the men's bathroom. I, I, I don't think that's the... I mean, if there was a robot working side by side with Mr. Monday, Mr. Monday would make sure he's better than the robot. I mean, that's just the way it goes with me. That's fair. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Monday! Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Check out the new trailer from the Dirt Bag Boys, and we'll be right back with Donald Barrett from the Cannabis Radio Network. Yeah! You said, right? Right. you said it right. This is it. For all the champagne, glory, and gold, the main event of that first turn is going to be a killer. Right. You know what I mean? Three ways. I never stopped. All right. I took a long break, you know what I mean? But I was focused. I was super focused, fam. I don't need craft beer. I can do a Heineken and then drink a craft beer. With regular cheese, then artisanal cheese, then special bread, then regular bread, then have some Wonder Bread and some white bread, then some Jewish bread, and then some Christian bread. Uh. Then I'm eating halal. And then I'm shooting a cow. I got this thing already laid out. Big Tim's gonna lay it down on the cuts. Get Timmy. Go Timmy, 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 go Timmy, Timmy. Go Timmy, 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 go Timmy, Timmy. Please don't fart. Go Timmy, 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 go Timmy, Timmy. Go Timmy, 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 go Timmy, Timmy. Watch me go. You might have to go two pairs of boxer briefs. Or you might have to go boxer brief. You, you might have to go boxer brief. You might have to go boxer brief with regular boxes over it. <laughs> You know that way you got the you got a mix going on, dude. I'm not going double Dutch. There's no it's a f roast my nutsack. I off. mean, if you got extra moisture, you got to. Analytic Wealth Advisors is a firm specializing in financial planning, insurance, and retirement income. Setting up your future can be tough, but Analytic Wealth is here to simplify the process, taking you from before and through retirement with clarity and focus. Time to feel confident about your future. Thank you for coming, buddy. Hey, thanks. How thanks you doing? I mean, I'm, I'm, I couldn't be better. You stoked up? I mean, I could be better, but I mean. Do you smoke hashish? You know, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked that question. Do no, you? I don't. I don't smoke no. hash. You smoke hash? I don't smoke at all, but I have a friend who makes you don't it smoke in at a washing machine. What yeah. the wrong with you? I just, I don't know. You I'm abnormal. Turn on me. You're going to turn on me now, right? <laughs> no, I'm not going to turn on you. The whole interview now, you're not a smoker, so you're going to turn on me. Not at all. No. All right, no. I just want to make sure. No, we're good. We're good. Calm down. Yeah. Um, How'd you get into, you know, getting a radio station about talking about cannabis? Oh, smoking weed. That's how you did it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, great question. Yeah. You're inspiring all the kids out there. I like that. So no, that, no, no. Sorry, how, sorry. How, did, how did it sound? I, I've, I've, been, I've been in direct response marketing or TV infomercials for 20 years. Really? And I've marketed all, all types of products on television, um, from health products to sexual aid products to... Uh, clean, uh, almighty, kind of, what, almighty cleanses. What kind of sexual aid uh, products have you uh, pushed? Yeah, yeah, you know, we did like uh, yeah, natural testosterone boosters and things like that. But uh, a lot of health and nutrition products. Usually products um, that really help fight chronic degenerative disease. And seriously, on a serious note, the real reason I got in, into the industry is my, my family was 
stricken with cancer. My dad, uh, my best friend, uh, you know, diagnosed with liver cancer, lived 10 years with it and died. Uh, my, my brother died with 36 years old with brain cancer. So that kind of motivated you. Yeah, and my mother had uh, a lung cancer just recently died. Everyone that dies, my family dies of cancer, Jesus. you know? The statistics are crazy today. You know, one out of two Americans are going to be diagnosed with, with cancer sometime in their life. I mean, I probably have it. And I'm looking at you. You're looking at me. I, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, I know. Your odds aren't too good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, but, but I'm safe, though. I think I'm good, right? Uh, uh, well, well, uh, uh, well, is it a threesome now? <laughs> <laughs> Only when the camera cuts out. <laughs> So you, but that, that's really how I got in, in, into the industry, and I'll tell you that, the FT, you, you want, you, we were talking about criminal organizations a little bit. Yeah. You know, the biggest criminal organization in the country is the FDA, in my opinion. Tell us why. That's my yeah. opinion. I mean, I, I want to know why. First of all, the food industry. Food and drug administration. Uh, how big is the food industry? Humongous. How big is the drug industry? Huge. Huge. Why are they under one association? What the fuck is wrong with us? Yeah. Should be two yeah. separate ones? Okay. Uh, Maybe food is a drug? No. Maybe. No. Sugar. Uh, you, Sugar's bad for okay. you. Okay, the bottom line is the, the, the FDA is probably one of the most politically corrupt organizations out there. And in the 80s, when the AIDS epidemic came out, what happened was they pushed through a lot of laws where it allowed the drug companies to actually, um, you know, uh, do a lot of the funding at the FDA. And people don't know this. Uh, many people don't know this. Even kids going to college to be medical students don't know this. Their curriculum is all taught to them by the drug companies. The drug companies control the world today, and that's just, right. it's just how it is. 80% huge industry. I want you to think about this for a second. Man, we don't have to go into it much longer, but 80%, 80%, 80 of every political contribution comes from a drug company. Really? Yeah. Trump? Yeah, <laughs> Trump, whoever, it doesn't matter. Eighty percent. That's crazy. So yeah, that's and that's that's on both sides, right? Right. Yeah, it's on both sides. It doesn't yeah. matter. So it doesn't matter who wins or loses. Their side is represented. Yeah, and, and you know we can go into it, and that's that's what I usually do on my shows. I talk a lot about health and nutrition, but you know it's interesting. The yeah, the cancer industry has an Alice in Wonderland definition of a, a cure for cancer. Do you know if you're if you're diagnosed with cancer today, and you're breathing five years from now? breathing you're considered cured of cancer so technically my father was cured of cancer and he died of cancer because he lived 10 years with it and so when you look at the statistics on television which are lies they say oh the five-year statistics all the five year look at all the five-year survival rates they're getting better you know what they're getting better at they're finding a better way to die to find it earlier Come yeah, in earlier you for your mammogram. Time. Yeah. You know, kind of, we're finding plant, you know, galaxies we don't even ever heard of before. Never mind cancer. Do you believe cells. in like holistic medicine? What, 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 who's holistic medicine? No, do you believe in like, you know, yeah, of course. do you believe in that instead of like the drugs? Well, I believe in both. Yeah. I like drugs too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For healing like cancer. But like to heal cancer. Like, uh, if I had cancer, what would you if do? I had cancer, I'd do Rick Simpson oil. Now, a lot of people don't know, probably don't even know what Rick Simpson oil is. I'm actually in the process of writing a book on it called The Unspoken Cure. But everyone in my family that's died has died of cancer, and chemotherapy it just, it just it ate them away. I would worse. never do I don't think I'll do chemo when I get cancer. Yeah. Well, if, your if your doctor doesn't recommend it to you, he can go to jail or get fined $10,000. So just, the, just know the guy in the white coat is going to recommend it to you because he has to by law. That's BS. That's, that's just how it is Yeah, today. it's not good. But the bottom line is we're, we have to take control of our own health. And since 1976 in this country, you know, cannabis has been illegal. Right. Before that, it was in the fabric of our society. I mean, it was in, it, it was in it was everything. Fabric. It was in our food. Yeah. It was in our, our clothing. I mean, we, we ate it. I mean, it was, it was, it was everywhere. Now, it, it, you know, everyone is completely depleted, and they're finding out that they're may be some correlation with the spike in diseases like we never heard of. I mean, like fibromyalgia and things like, you know, we, things, all these types of diseases you never even hear of before are popping up. I mean, it's, 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 it's absolutely bananas is what's going on. But let's get off of that. People got to take control of their own health. The reason right. I got into the cannabis business and it's not really the cannabis industry. It's really, I, I educate people on the medicinal benefits of cannabis. Right. I work with, we have a program called the Green Nurses of America. We have over 300 nurses across the country now 
that people can pick up the phone and, and talk to somebody about the benefits of CBD and cannabis without asking their neighbor or their friend. They can right. actually pick up the phone and talk to somebody that's educated, that knows what they're talking about. Is there cannabis out there that can shrink boils? You know, <laughs> kind of Did you say oil. balls? Boils. I have a boil. I have balls? a boil on my groin, and I need it shrunk. Is there something? <laughs> you know, the funny. The funny thing is, the worst thing, worst way you can take cannabis, is to smoke it. What do you do? I smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that. Were you a cop? <laughs> no, no, no. 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 Seriously, if you if you actually take cannabis, right, and you juice it, like like wheatgrass or something yeah. like that, yeah. it's the healthiest plant you could ever imagine. I mean, really. Put it in your salad and hey, shit. Really, a lot yeah. of people do. They grind it up, put it in their salad. You don't get high. Right. Unless you eat a lot of salad. Um, but, <laughs> but the bottom line is, it is one of the healthiest plants known to man. Now, God, I, I, whether you believe in God or not, I don't know. I don't, I, you know. But I don't believe you bring a toaster to General Motors. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, a thousand years ago, right? If you had a lighter, imagine having a lighter a thousand years ago, you'd been a god. I mean, I think I'm pretty great now. Yeah. <laughs> if you had a, a lighter a thousand years so, ago, yeah. imagine how cool you'd be. I mean, you'd be I'd like, be check this. Donnie, how long, how long has the Cannabis Radio Network been around? The university? The station. <laughs> Just curious. <laughs> <laughs> We've been around the show over a year now. Really? Yeah, we started last year at the Nikan event. So just uh, we, we're hitting our 12-month anniversary. Oh, we have about 15. Yeah. We have about 15,000 people that watch the show, primarily here in New England, but we're spreading out across the country. And we have about 50 local broadcast stations that rebroadcast the show. So it's all the states, even if they're not legalized marijuana, the people are still watching you in those other states too. Uh, yeah, yeah, they are. But more, more. For the medicinal end of it, right, it really gets our foot in the door. People don't want to hear about uh, spleefs, right, or getting high. Let's go get high, man. No, no, no. right. But but towns that are opening their 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 doors in essence for medical facilities to open it's a in lot. their town. There's a lot going on in there. Right it, they, but the education has to go with it. Because if someone walks in the store and they don't know what they're looking for, they're gay. the old, older person gets confused. Cat, do you smoke at all? Or do I anything? don't. What the hell is wrong with you guys? Like, you guys all drunks? Yeah. I, what about, I, and <laughs> I know, I know yeah. Klusky doesn't. You know, it's funny. Just you pills. Know, people Just drink. Pills, oh, we, I, I do pills too sometimes. What are, <laughs> uh, uh, but, you know, I find drinking, like my, I could have a bottle of alcohol, a bottle of vodka at my house. They're all pot smoke. Nobody, nobody drinks it. Really? Right. It could be there for a year. Cotton mouth, huh? It'd be there for a freaking year. No one touches it. Drink it. Fucking weed. Forget about it. What are some? What, be gone what are some of the shows weekend. you have on your network? Don't you have a show about growing weed? Yeah. Is Tell yeah. us about it. Yeah, it's a wonderful show. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> give me a little. Give me a little overview. Yeah. Well, it's called the Average Joe Grow. Okay. You know because. The, the average guy ain't an expert. He just wants to be an average Joe Grow, you know. And, and grow his own stuff. Yeah, in, in, in Massachusetts. Did you grow this right here? I don't grow that. Okay. No, no, no. The average Joe Grow grew that. Really? Yeah, his name's Jake, but it, it's actually, um, the name of the show is The Average Joe Grow. And it shows the average person how to grow step by step from seed, you know, all the way to, you know, they, they, they trim it and all that stuff. Uh, but he's really good at showing people the easiest and simplest way to do it because it's not that difficult. Right. I mean, it's like seeds and dirt. You know, <laughs> people like want to be, oh, you need this chemical, this chemical, put in fish shit, put in this shit. Yeah, it's like making homemade shit. wine. People, some okay, people do it. It's not that hot. I mean, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I was bored one night. I'm like, let me just take it, because we have like a fucking million seeds. So I said, yeah. fuck it, I was bored. I have my own How to Make It Grow show, but we're not allowed to show it on Facebook Live. It's, it doesn't involve my face, so they won't do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. all right. So what are some of the industry <laughs> trends you guys talk about on the show? Well, we talk a, a lot about the medicinal benefits of it, but we talk about growing. Yeah. Uh, and we're also talking about a lot of, we have a new show coming out called Cashing In. Do you want to switch chairs, because this one swivels? Whatever you want to uh, do. No, I don't know. No, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Cashing in, um, we have a show where we talk to companies, uh, investable, yeah. take this investable companies. <laughs> no, 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 no. You we take this. Don't, don't switch. You, you don't want to switch? Don't, All right. Don't, right. don't fuck anything. Right. Dad, Dad said no. So we have a show called Cashing In that uh, we, we, we in, interview investable companies in the cannabis space. So that's another show. We have a whole bunch of shows coming out. I mean, people want this information. 
And it's not out there. But the, one of the biggest shows we have to do, I have to say, is the medicinal the, the medicinal end of the There's like multi benefits, right? Oh my for God, people. it's unbelievable. Like someone, tell us something. I, I mean, stuff. my sister had fibromyalgia, so, uh, terrible fibromyalgia. She has a uh, salon right here in Saugus. Um, we're in Lynn, I know, so right here in Saugus. So I kind of fucked that up. But whatever. <laughs> she has a salon in Saugus, right? What kind of salon is it? Hair salon. Oh, I thought, it was, a weed, I thought it was one no, of those. No, I don't no. have a weed salon. <laughs> so bad fibromyalgia. Bad. I mean, and, what exactly and, can you tell our viewers what it is? Well, fibromyalgia is a very unique disease. You know, it has 17 specific points in the body where you get pain. And if you have pressure, they touch certain points of your body. If you have pain in those areas, like nerves. Yes, it's it depends considered on your algae. My algae is in my fibro. <laughs> <laughs> But fibromyalgia, and, and she also has migraine, he migraine headaches, okay? THCA, she started taking THCA. Not CBD, but a product called THCA. And it doesn't get you high. Doesn't get you high, but you do have to get it at a medical dispensary because it has THC. Right. Um, a, though. See, when you, when you burn it, the A drops off and it becomes C, and it becomes THC. So, uh, but her fibromyalgia. Gone. What happened? What, what's great about this is it's it's it, so it, she's it, cured. It's not like it's not like three months. Like oh, like uh, hey, these antidepressants keep faking these. You know, another three months. Take them another three months. See if they work. This works it right away. It's like either works or it doesn't. Why isn't everyone doing it then? People just just don't know. More people are finding out yeah. about it, and a lot of people are scared. I mean, a lot of people don't know what to take, what not to take. And there's a lot of different products out there. Like I know, uh, not to get into specifics, but there's full spectrum CBD, there's isolates. You know, the best is the full spectrum CBD. You know, like for vitamins for years, people went into the vitamin store and went up and down the aisles and bought A, B, C, D. You know, you bought them that way. Now they go in and buy Whole Foods that right. have all those in there. Right. Because there's so many cofactors and things and constituents to hold that together. They don't even know what the fuck's in there, to be honest, when right. they talk about a whole food. So when you talk about picking things apart, that's what the, the vitamin companies have done for years. See, full spectrum means it has the whole plant in there. Right. And um, right. if people have cancer, and I may, you mentioned cancer, and I, you know, I have my book coming out, but Rick Simpson is a gentleman, uh, he's a Canadian, he wrote a book and he developed uh, an oil. He takes cannabis and he like, he, he has a process where he like melt, I don't know, boils it down with some, I don't, I don't know what the fuck he does, but it looks like <laughs> oil when it comes right, out, right. right? And you take about a gram, a gram of rice a day, and it's a 90 day treatment. And he's claimed he's cured 5,000 people. I invited one of those people out on my show. His name is Darren Miller. He cured himself. Heart cancer had 2.8 months to live. Oh I mean, God. I mean, stories like yeah. you, like you wouldn't believe. And it's not like it interferes with their medication. It's not like you have to stop. Well, it's all natural, right? It, you know, it, it's all natural. Right. Now these dispensaries. I got my buddies. You know, I don't. I don't buy weed or anything. I go to these dispensaries, but the, I, everyone's complaining that they're really pricey. Oh my God! It's Are ridiculous. They? Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it, 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 this state is so What's fucked up. What's going on? Why are they so you, expensive? This, this state is so fucked up. Someday they're going to put me in charge. <laughs> <laughs> then they'll really be fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously. Here's what's happening. I mean, you go into a, 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 the average person buys a quarter ounce of weed a, a, a week, right? On the you, street? You don't know that, On the right? street or at yes. those dispensaries? Uh, uh, sure. Yes. He's right. He's right. That's good. There you go. <laughs> I've been around weed long enough to know that the average person will buy about a quarter, a quarter ounce a, a, a week. That's probably about the average that someone smokes. Okay. If you go to a dispensary and buy joints? that. How many joints is that? I don't know. I don't yeah. smoke joints. What do you do, bowls? What do you, a copy? You guys <laughs> have a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it, 10. It, okay. $100 for a quarter ounce, plus you're paying 22, 23% tax. So $123 for a quarter ounce that you can get from your buddy for $70 or $60. Mm -hmm. And it's probably better. And that's just how it is. How, so what's the I think, tax on like it, a, a McDonald's hamburger? And it's gonna just for comparison. Six point two five percent. One one claims to cure cancer, and the other one is a McDonald's hamburger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's it, it's it's it is what it is. But so you have live shows like three nights a week? Oh yeah, yeah. Sometimes I do them four, but sometimes I miss days. 
<laughs> Be because how of many, the weed? <laughs> how many joints a, a day do you smoke? No, I don't smoke all the time, all day long. I don't say it. Just did. at night. <laughs> so just before you go to bed? Or come on a show. Or before dinner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. What do you think about these CBD things that are out there today? You know, I... I, I What's your take on it? You know, it doesn't get you high. Right. You know that, right? Well, they have ones that do, right? <laughs> CBD don't get you high. So it's no good. So you mm. have to be high. No. <laughs> CBD is really both for the health benefits, but the bottom line is for it to actually work, it has to have a percentage, a, 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 like 0.3% THC. And a lot of these companies out there that are just hemp companies, it doesn't have the 0.3% THC. So you don't get a lot of the benefits that they, they, they talk about. So there's, there's, a, there's a lot of misconception out there when it comes to CBD. And when it comes to CBD, there's the last thing I want to say about it is you get what you pay for. Just like anything else, you get what you pay for. Right. Okay. Right. The, uh, the, the green nurses and the green nurses of America, they recommend like a 1,500 milligram bottle. Every, uh, you go to the store, uh, the guy's going to say a 250 uh, milligram bottle or a milliliter bottle. Right, right, I mean, right. it's just, you're not getting enough. It's trying to kill a BB gun with an elephant. Do you know what I mean? Right. It just doesn't work. I mean, I can uh, crush a BB gun with an elephant. What? <laughs> I mean, you just can't do it. You now know you, what I mean? You have to whack it a couple of times. <laughs> now, you found, I heard you founded a company oh, that God. did over $2 billion in sales. Is that oh, true? yeah. Yeah, before yeah. the feds came in. Really? Wow. <laughs> what company was this and what happened? Was, you got a safety deposit box? What's going on? Is there an Oliver Stone movie about this? No, you got I, a safe? I, 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 no. what, what company was that? Well, I grew up a poor black man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I grew up in Saugus. I thought you grew up in Gotham City. No, you kind of looked I, like... I, I, I grew up in Saugus. <laughs> I, I tell you, I, I, you know, every time I went to college, I was invited not to come back, so I decided I wasn't going to go to school anymore. I was working at Prince Pizza. You know yeah. Prince Pizza, Leaning Tower? Yeah. Yeah, I was pounding pizzas back in the room. Guy comes Were in. Were you a comedian there? Fuck no. I, I used to feed him. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I, make sure these guys get fed when they get off stage. That was my fucking job. I, that's what I did. And I had a good time doing that. And, um, but I, I, I was working at Prince Pizza uh, after I wasn't very successful in college, and I read a book. And I read a book called um, uh, The Magic of Thinking Big. Then I read a book called um, How to Escape the American Rat Race. It was called uh, Seven Steps to Freedom, How to Escape the American Rat Race. It was a guy named Benjamin Suarez. And he talked about the direct marketing business. Um, and I, I was slowly finding myself in the American rat race. <laughs> right. You know, flying right, out of right. college three times. You know, I had a coat hanger for an antenna on my car. I mean, I was like, I was like, I was, I was out of control, right? So I, I finally got this book, and for the first time in my my life, I, I had a belief that I could be successful in something. Was it like and a Tony Robbins thing? I hate Tony Robbins. The, <laughs> the guy with the teeth yeah. lied to me about Alex Guerrero. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's talk about Alex Guerrero. Weren't you in business oh, with him? We can I keep thought going. Tony Robbins were like Italian pigeons. Tony <laughs> Robbins. You know Tony Robbins. No, <laughs> Alex Guerrero's <laughs> walk across the coals. I know it. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Alex Guerrero, that's Tom Brady's trainer. Tom Brady. Weren't you partners with him? Partners. Yeah. Well, let's use that term loosely. Okay. We're not like not you know, partners. Not sexually. That was weird. That's, that's well, you looked at me, you winked. Nah. I didn't know. They couldn't see. You winked yeah. at me. He is kind of cute, though. Really? Yeah. So what happened? Let's talk about Alex Guerrero real quick. Yeah. Is he a fraud or what? The guy is a genius. Honest to God, I mean, I, I got in a lot of trouble with the guy. But the guy's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to tell you how it is. He threw you under the bus. He fucking threw me right under the bus, right? <laughs> I, I, let me tell you how I found out about Alex Guerrero. <laughs> How'd you meet him? Let's let's go from step I'll one. How'd you, you meet this guy? I'll tell you exactly. I listened to a tape series called "Get the Edge" by Tony Robbins. Oh, on tape it. number twelve, <laughs> he talked about Dr. Alex Guerrero and how Dr. Alex Guerrero was a genius and how he was healing people with cancer. And I had one of my product development people at the time. I go, "You go find this guy. Let's get him in here for a show." So I did it, and I got him in here for the show. And it was this, only the second infomercial I ever produced at the time. I had a Coral Calcium show, then the Supreme Green show was the second show. So I produced that show. We did $35 million in sales in about eight months. And um, 
And I found out he wasn't a doctor. How'd you find that out? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. The feds. Prostate they exam. Finally find, feds always find out. So he was acting like no, he was a... Well, first of all, um, Tony Robbins referred to him as a doctor. He was a doctor of oriental medicine, but he had no right to tell, you know... They I, give those away in China. I asked that... I'm like you. You're like asking me questions. I asked the questions on the show. I'm, I wasn't like giving the answers. Well, you didn't check his degrees, is what you're saying. Yeah, you just took his word for you it. You just right. right. I wouldn't know how to read. Just them like anyway. we're taking your exactly. word for it. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't go to college. Like, that's I don't why. read Chinese. So. But you know what? After that, yeah. I had a whole legal team that looked at every friggin' show that we ever did. <laughs> yeah. But the first two shows that I did was Coral Calcium and Supreme Greens, and it was well, I don't know, forty-nine million dollars in fines. So, Come on. Yeah, it was Obama. <laughs> so how much how much money did Alex Guerrero screw you? Well, screw was like, you know. What do you mean screw? I mean, did he screw you like big time? Well, I'd do it again. Yeah. <laughs> so you made you just put the money someplace else. So you must have made him a couple bucks. No, we did we did really well together. Uh, he he actually settled with the Federal Trade Commission for a Cadillac Escalade. I, I had to pay thirty million dollars. <laughs> but you know, it's all fun. And, it's all fun now. When's the last know? time you talked? That's to when him? I found weed. Really? When's the last time you talked to Guerrero? <laughs> uh, when? Oh, I uh, four or five years. What would happen right now if you guys walked by each other in the street? Would you take him out? Oh, he's <laughs> a little guy. So what? Yeah, not that would be easier. Not that I'm a big guy, but you know, I mean, he's like. You know, so how did things end? He's a little skinnier than. How did you know. things end between you guys? The Fed, the Fed showed you're up. You're a relationship counselor. <laughs> I'm like, um, let me, let me tell you. Well, the Feds called him, yeah. and they called me, and they said, "You guys better not talk anymore." <laughs> that's how you. That's how you break up at summer camp. <laughs> so you're like. Just let the lawyers do the talking, and that's what happened. So you guys are like Rihanna and Chris Brown. Like the courts separated you guys, even though you wanted to like <laughs> stay connected. <laughs> <laughs> like he beat the shit out of you in in his car, is what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're you do it again. In this situation. It's funny. It's exactly say it like that. that. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. Like that. You're Rihanna. <laughs> you, everybody should take it his side. Like exactly like that. Did you, guys, did you guys like hang out a lot? How many years were you guys together, Dayton? Dayton. Now how no, many years were you guys? I mean, we were we were in the show Couple for years? Four, 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 five years or so. Yeah, and he and he was coming. He was training Tom. He was going back and forth. He'd shoot the shows, and um, you know we shot a few other shows after the FTC made me finally pull that one. Um, and uh, you know, he's a really interesting guy. The product was Supreme Greens. It was a fantastic product, I and mean, it really was. What I mean, do you think they, about him and Brady's relationship? You think that's all legit? And he's really helping. Why you think they're gay or something? No, I'm just wondering if he's really helping him. Like oh, yeah. Physically. Let me tell you something. No, they were just taking snaps. When I tell that you something, Alex Guerrero was a genius. I'm not telling you. I, I, yeah. I swear to God, I, even though I've had issues with the guy, yeah, yeah. whatever, I'm telling you, the guy is one of the most intelligent guys when it comes to health and nutrition that I've ever met. And I've been interviewing people for 20 years on a serious note in, in health and nutrition. The guy is a genius. There's no doubt about that's it. That's what they say, yeah. There's no doubt about it. As I mean, long as he keeps Tom healthy, that's all I care about. Yeah. That's it. Right, right, yeah. I know, I know, but the guy, he is, he's the real deal. There's no doubt about Tell it. Tell me some of the infomercials that you did. What are some of the infomercials? Let's talk about them. Let's talk about them. <laughs> like, was that, did you ever meet that? Uh, what did you do, that? like, Thigh Master? No, I no. did. <laughs> No. Well, Chuck uh, Norris machines. Like the, the guy with the uh, that did all the coke that died. Oh there. no, this guy. He yeah. Like, you know, he was so fucking high. Yeah. How about this guy? He bit the lady's ass at the convention, right? <laughs> He's got a right. slow that heart. Down in, oh, oh, sham we, wow. Every sham year, wow the maze. electronic. I got thrown out of the electronic electronic retailers association. Yeah. Long story. You got thrown out with those two monsters, didn't? Yeah, yeah. Didn't at, you at this point, at this up. point, you're the only good guy there. I was, and this guy got thrown out. The guy with the sham wow. Yeah. He I bites don't. a hooker's ass and gets arrested. Yeah, well, that's right? what you pay for. Did you read about this? I couldn't believe it. I couldn't. <laughs> yeah, I never seen any. Listen, yeah. there was no spit on her ass. You wow, guy. That was the end of him. <laughs> there, was no there was no spit yeah, on her ass. Yeah. So what, what he, went, he moved after. on to the slap chop. What are a couple of the infomercials that you did? All right. Uh, well, I did the coral calcium. That was the first really big one. I did I all, that. all the uh, with Robert Barefoot as a calcium magnesium type product. Uh, I did a, a lot of books. 
I mean, I've had five time, uh, five books on the New York Times best bestsellers list. Wow. Um, uh, real estate, real estate millionaire, um, uh, Dr. Lorraine Day's um, books, cancer don't scare, cancer uh, doesn't scare me anymore. Of course, you I used to be on late night, right? Would you your face used yeah, to talk late? Yeah, yeah, late night. Late you night, did, right? early morning, yeah. Yeah, people used to think I was a TV star, but I actually paid to put myself on TV. I remember when he was there. <laughs> I swear to God, it just hit me, right? Do you remember? Do you remember? <laughs> it was you. They go, wow, you're on TV. Yeah, well, yeah I paid for that time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the My Pillow guy. He's just a fucking movie star. He's Most of America would pay to be on TV. Paying for his time. Holy it's, shit. Hey, you, you can be the My Pillow guy tonight for 50 bucks. You want to spend 50 bucks at midnight. I want 500. All right. All right, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Kluska, what do we got for Mr. Barrett here? Yeah, what do you got? Well, Mr. Monday, there have been a lot of great infomercial products over the years that never rose to the great successes that they really should have. We want to run a few by Mr. Barrett and see what he might have done differently to help them succeed. Are you guys ready? Yep. The first one is for golf enthusiasts that spend a little too much time on the toilet. We all know what taking a crap should do in about five minutes, right? <laughs> If you want to be patient and squeeze out every last drop, you can't just hop off the potty. If uh, if you had this invention, you wouldn't have to. Don, what would you do to market this infomercial and make it a hit? Now, what, what, what exactly is it? It just gives you a little a bit more putting, time. It's a little putting, putting green, green, little yeah. putting green at the, at the base of your feet yeah. when you like you're to call taking it a crap. Putting brown. Yeah. It's kind of like it's kind of like squatty Sick. potty. Don't. Why do you get to bring that up, man? Bring what up? The squatty, the squatty potty. I lost so much money on that squatty potty. What are you talking about? The squatty party. We talked about it already. What do you mean? You know the thing you go, it's the squatty party, right? It's the thing you, you step on. That thing is huge. And you, you, no, it wasn't. I thought it made it big. It was a stool. No, but I thought it made it big. No, that was extends. Oh. No, you're, you're supposed to <laughs> you make a stool You got them all mixed up. I was involved in an infomercial called the Almighty Cleanse. It was a dual action cleanse, a colon cleanse flush. I got a phone call from a guy who goes, hey, you want to do this infomercial with me? It's called the Squatty Party. I got to deal with Bed Bath & Beyond. You know, I think we can probably get the product out there. Yeah, came out, ripped me off. I was doing the... Uh... I, I, I was done with shit at that point, okay? <laughs> I lost about $50 million passing up on that deal. Really? So when I see that show, it reminds me of the Squatty Party. All right, let's go to the next one, this poor guy. Thank you. Jesus. Just bringing up some dark memories. Kush. <laughs> Kush is a popular strain of indica cannabis, Kush, but this yeah, next Kush. as seen on TV product dons the same name. Sleeping on your side as a big breasted woman can be extremely uncomfortable as one's breast topples down on the other. We've all been there. Enter the Kush breast support. Dawn, this seems like a home run, but it never reached the desired audience. What could we have done to make this? Oh my God! Is this you know, real? It, it, it's interesting. Do you is know how many real? hours of sleep? your life that you actually spend sleeping? sleeping? Do you know how many hours? How many hours? Well, eight a hours. Day. I have no friggin' idea. Eight but hours a, a lot, day. Okay. But that yeah. broad okay. was sleeping in a corset. How many hours a day do you spend sleeping in that? But that was just for the show. You oh. have to yeah, like, doesn't a bra do the same thing? I mean, how could this thing never made it? I think if the thing was three feet long. Yeah. And she put it in her mouth, and down below, would have, the thing would still be on the market. Why would she want to put it in her mouth, though? I'm just saying. Yeah, see, I was born she half. wants to practice. I was born she, half -half. No, she doesn't. What do you mean? She wants to practice. She they would rather yeah. do a fake I, thing than the real skin balloony. You know, I, I had a, a similar product, not like this, but it was like a pillow sleeping product, right? And it just gives you the way you sleep every night. And it, it, was, a, it was like a silk pillowcase so your your face would glide so you wouldn't get the wrinkles in the morning mm -hmm. uh, you know what i mean it was, uh, a good, it was a good idea it's a good idea i still got wrinkles though, right? this, yeah. yeah those yeah. aggressive pillows it, it, yeah. if, if that's a placeholder for her husband he's a very very gifted man he's got a thick dick yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, i don't know how they would have to sleep that what's he could the next one we got here this last product's goal is to help with something 75 percent of all americans struggle with every day and that is weight loss the sauna pants are a wearable product that heats up and helps the pounds fall by the weight side. The waist this, side. These never captured America's curiosity like I think they should have. <laughs> and uh, it's probably because they weren't marketed right. What do you think we should have done differently? Yeah, how would you market I'll that? I'll tell you. I've tried every diet known to man. I really have. I tried the 30 day diet, I lost a month. <laughs> I, I, I don't know about this one. I, I don't know. I'm, it looks like a human life raft. And I have no asses. It <laughs> Look is. At so I'd be afraid my ass, my whole ass would disappear. I prefer my sausage <laughs> smoked, not steamed, right? They should sell I mean, these. Is this real? real they you, should sell these. You guys, it might be a punk. Why are you no, trying to No, no, no. This is real. I've never seen I thought these were infomercials you did that didn't make it. Come on. 
Would Why you do, would you do that? I'm not crazy as shit than this. <laughs> <laughs> than that? But I mean, Maybe I think not. that if you did that, that would like, sh I mean, think about it. It would shrivel up your pecker. Make it, you know what I mean? If you use that thing, the thing would shrivel up. Want to try? I don't want to try it, but I'm just saying, like, they should sell this to, like, cruise ships. Do you remember the Floby? Yes. Yeah, the Floby. That was a big hit, you know. You, won, you went on that one? No, 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 no. I knew the guy that owned it, though, but that was, that was quite a hit. I think about it every time I have to go and get a haircut. What would you say to Alex Guerrero right now if he came up to you in face to face? What would you like if you had like one sentence to say to the guy? I'd ask for season tickets. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for the rest of your life. He owes, he owes you that. Definitely. That's a son of a bitch. Yeah. Don't Holy you think? Crap. Yeah, I agree. Cadillac Escalade. Gives a five-year-old Escalade to the FTC. <laughs> I gotta give 35 million. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go check out our latest awkward landing. But before we go, I want to. Hey, it looks like my house. I want to thank this guy right here for hey, coming no, in today. No, to, yeah. You're a hot ticket. You're something else. Hey, keep up the great work, and you gotta tune into his radio show, everybody. This guy's all right. All right. We'll Thanks. be back. We'll be back in a few. Thank you. Yeah. Good job. Hey, that was awesome. Woo. I'm gonna just like put it on autopilot for a minute before we. Oh, my arms, man. Yeah, I'm just going to keep working on the uh, flight plan. Yeah, yeah, flight plan. Yeah. Keep playing. Yeah, that's a fun little thing you do over there. What are you playing, crossword puzzles? Uh, oh, we're trying to... Yeah. Anyway, have you seen the movie they got playing back there? They got Jurassic Park. I watched it in the hotel room the other day. you believe in any of that stuff in that movie? What do you mean, do I believe in it? The book. It was like a science book by that guy, Michael Crouton. Yeah. Christ. Christ. Michael Crichton. Yeah, whatever. It's a, you say Crichton, I say Crouton. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Listen, it's not tomato tomato situation. It's a it's a proper name. Michael Crichton. Is that, that's how you say his name. Well, it's a proper name based on a salad topping. All right, just like tomato tomato. All right, so I mean, I put it all on my salad. All right. What do you put it all on your salad? What, what does that mean? What are you talking about? Um, like I said, tomato, tomato, I put those in my salad. It's not crouton, it's not crouton, it's crichton. That's, that's how you, you know. Alright. Do you believe in the book by Michael Crouton about Jurassic Park? It's crichton, Michael yeah, Crichton. Whatever, what are Second you dodging time. the question for? Are you like a religious freak or something? Like, just answer the question. Do you believe in it or not? Rick, I saw that movie once back in 93. Uh, what are you trying to ask me? I'm like, on? I'm not trying to ask you anything. I'm trying to tell you that, like, you should probably give it a rewatch. All right, it's on Netflix, and like I watched it the other day, I can't get it out of my head. It's like, it's unbelievable with the 4K and the dinosaur. It's amazing. Like, all right, all right. You don't know what you're Listen. missing, and you're not learning anything, obviously. Okay, if I promise to rewatch that stupid movie, can we talk about something else? <laughs> yeah. No, we're not going to talk about something else. Like I'm probably going to talk about this for a long time. Like what? Like I don't understand. Like it's an action movie that has like a science-based fact to it. Like there's brontosaurus, there's DNA, there's science, there's microscopes, there's chaos theory, there's Dr. Alan Grant's entire catalog. Like if you studied anything by Okay, all right. Whoa, 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 whoa. None of those things are real. All right, hello, Earth to captain over here. All right, brontosaurus was a dinosaur bone theory that uh, people made up in the goddamn 70s, all right? <laughs> and then the water in the hand, the chaos theory, bone, <laughs> all right? That doesn't exist. All right, and uh, uh, info to you, buddy. Dr. Alan Grant is a character played by Sam Neill. Um. Can you um, do me a favor and just try and repeat some of those lies? Because oh, I wasn't me? listening. Are you me right now? You say, All right, me. listen, follow along. Yeah, yeah, I'll follow, follow, follow along. Yeah, yeah, I'll follow Number along. one, yeah, yeah. the Brontosaurus was a yeah. hoax, okay? Yeah. People stop believing in that in the 70s, yeah, yeah. all right? Get, get it through your head, okay? Oh, my God! Oh! <laughs> Welcome back. Klusky, what do we got here? I heard we have some more jail mail. I don't get it, but these jailbirds just love Mr. Monday. It doesn't make any sense to me. These are grown men. <laughs> Maybe he's giving them hope or when they get out or I don't know. I think they think they're going to come by the studio or something. I you, you empower men. I've been, you know something, Johnny Spranza once said that to me. Yeah. Yeah. I find you inspiring, but yep. our first letter is from Rick Tittlesworth. He's 49 years old, and he's in Middleton Correctional Facility. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Rick recently ordered an I Love Monday's Winter hat, and he loves it oh, because yeah, it covers we did send his one whole dumb head. 
<laughs> Rick is currently serving 35 years for killing his wife's boyfriend. He oh, writes, Jesus. Mr. Monday, I love your message of energy. Mm. If I wake up on a Monday morning with a lot of anger, though, what should I do to get back on track? <laughs> The first thing Rick's gonna do is cover up that ugly cone head. Look at that thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yes, look at his head. Cover we, that. No wonder you're angry. We he must have a mirror in his cell. We sent him a hat and a cummerbund just to cover that thing. <laughs> I know he was pretty. Uh, he was pretty committed to like the visor life until recently. So. The visor life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I mean, he probably wakes up angry because he murdered his wife, right? Or his wife's boyfriend. I think his wife died giving him head. <laughs> <laughs> I bet his mom died giving him head, too. <laughs> he headbutted his wife's boyfriend. Yeah, <laughs> so that's yeah. how he died. From across the room. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the head on that guy. His brain crushed him. <laughs> I think I'd wake up angry, too, Rick, if I was you with a head like that. I'm sorry, buddy. Can you imagine Good being luck. that guy's barber? <laughs> Get a so fucking lobotomy. Work. All right, what do we got? What's the next one? These people are wacky. The next one is from Mikey Madsen. Mikey loves to laugh, and that's why he jives so well with the I Love Monday movement. Mr. Madsen was arrested last June for handing out horse tranquilizers to a group of underage midgets. Jesus. <laughs> Mikey writes, Mr. Monday, you are nuts. I love this new prank calls. You are a natural. When I get out of this shithole, I want head you up on your street team. What you think? Wow. What you a will huge never addition. be on my street team, buddy. Come on. It looks like your mother got raped by Dennis Rodman and made you. Look at him. Look at, look at him. Seriously. I want to know how he got that mouth on those horses. And the guy looks like he flosses with a rope. Look at those teeth. It Jesus looks like Christ. a skeleton is trying to escape through this guy's mouth. I don't know. You got a great resume, buddy. You, you're tranquilizing midgets. You're not going to be on any team of mine, you circus freak. I mean, honestly, he kind of looks like Sammy Sosa. I mean, look, it's Eminem halfway he looks through like a werewolf Sammy Sosa trans looks now. I mean, honestly, look at this thing. Because so, I am whatever you say I am. Fucking yarn teeth. All right. So I, can he come to your house or no, not? I want nothing to do with you, buddy. I hope you stay incarcerated. <laughs> what do we got next? This Who's last next one, one is from Ding Dong Alawala. He's currently serving life in Indiana for killing a man in Costco for cutting him in line at a free sample station. Ding Dong says Mr. Monday seems like a really nice man, and he wants to know what foods he needs to eat so that he can be a strong American man like Mr. Monday. <laughs> Ding Dong, I'd like to know who wrote the letter for you, okay? Because you definitely didn't. I mean, he killed a guy. <laughs> you ever had that Costco Ding food? Ding Dong was actually samples? named after his parents' doorbell. I mean, I'd kill somebody for less than that, so I do understand. Why don't you just go eat your cellmate's ass and call it a day, buddy? I, want <laughs> I wouldn't let that melt. No, in that's my not ass. a ding dong. That's a jelly roll. I want nothing to do. Listen, these three guys, like honestly, Klusky, can we get like the female penitentiary to send us stuff? Usually, in? I hold on to that mail and just I'll bring some of it in. <laughs> you hold on to it. A lot it of it's stuck together, but we'll read a couple of those on the air. <laughs> these guys are real creepy freaks. They scare the shit out of me. I promise. The next time we do this, we'll have some. And hot, ding dong, where are you looking? Who are you looking at? Incarcerated pool. <laughs> Look at this guy's face. Jesus Christ. Yeah, if you're in jail and and we haven't read your letter let yet, be patient. But uh, you know, keep sending them in on yeah. the. Ripped underwear with blood stains on it that you've been nailing us in. <laughs> Ding Dong looks like he ate a chain link fence. Look at his teeth. Ooh. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. Hey, well, you know, a great show tonight, guys. We got an after party going on here tonight, too. That's, yeah. yeah! Of course. We got to thank Donnie Barrett for coming up here tonight. That guy was the best. Was awesome. <laughs> great job. Thank you, Kat. We're going to hit it. The Nunda Monday night's over on three, Monday on three. One, two, three. Monday! Monday! <laughs> Is that Alex Guerrero?